Hello, I'm Cresta Cow. I'm reading uh, How to Be a Pirate, the second in the How to Train Your Dragon series for my writing shed. And I've got to chapter five. Do not open a coffin that says do not open on the front. And that sounds like very good advice. As soon as they got to the hooligan village, Hiccup and Fishlegs changed into dry-ish clothes. Burke was one of those damp places where clothes never really dried. And they just became warm and wet rather than cold and wet. They hurried as quickly as they could towards the Great Hall. By the time they got there, Stoic had called a big meeting of everybody and the Great Hall was already packed to bursting with great hairy hooligans jostling each other for a good view of the coffin which had been placed in a table in front of the fire. Uh, bit by bit, Hiccup and Fishlegs managed to wriggle their way through the crowd to the front. Ah! Hiccup! There you are, said Hiccup's father, Stoic the Vast, absent-mindedly, as he consulted with the other elders in front of the coffin. Stoic was a terrifying, red-headed bull of a man, whose belly turned a corner a good few foot or two before the rest of him. Interesting find you bet here, my, my boy, said Stoic, ruffling his hair, son's hair, proudly. The lost treasure of Grimbeard the Ghastly, eh? Yes, father, but said Hiccup. We're just about to open it, said Stoic. But what I'm trying to say is, interrupted old Brinkley, the cleverest and most ancient elder of the hooligan tribe, it is written quite clearly on the top of the coffin, do not open this coffin. Cursed be he who disturbs the remains of Grimbeard the Ghastly, the greatest pirate who ever struck terror into the inner isles. In my considerable experience it is always a good idea not to open a coffin that says do not open on the top of it. I agree, said Hiccup nervously. Grimby the Duck Ghastly was a really nasty piece of work. Anybody who opens that coffin could be in for a horrible shock. Rubbish, <coughs> scoffed Scott at the vast. A warning like <laughs> hang on just before we turn the page I want to show you this picture of Stoic the Vast thinking what would a great leader do in this situation? And I think a great leader would not open the coffin. Yeah. Uh, yes, rubbish, scoff, 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 the master. A warning like that to put off grave read robbers should not stay the hand of fearsome Vikings like ourselves. Shall we, um, shall we who laugh in the face of death and spit in the air, eye of the great typhoon, quail at a simple, simple curse to scare infants and old men? Rise of no, and not likely, governor. All those in favour of opening up the, up the box and seeing whether the lost treasure of Grimbeard the Ghastly is inside, say aye. I bellowed out every member of the hooligan tribe except for fish legs, old wrinkly and hiccup. Uh, Run for your lives, yelled toothless and hid in hiccup's shirt. This is, this is toothless, yes, you often hide in, in hiccup's shirt. Uh, uh, <coughs> fish legs edged backwards into the crowd. Not a good idea, not a good idea, not a good idea, said hiccup. He started backing away from the coffin as Stoic fiddles clumsily with the iron clasps. Not a good idea, not a good idea, not a good idea, repeated Hiccup as Stoic slowly creaked up the coffin lid. You see, it says, Beware, do not open this coffin. Cursed be he who disturbs the remains of Grimbeard the Ghastly, the greatest uh, pirate who ever struck terror into the inner eye coffin but they are creak the coffin lid op dropped open with a uh, bang stoic jumped away to avoid being splashed by the seawater gushing out of it from all sides everybody else tried very hard not to look nervous stoic peered into the coffin there was a bit of a pause not pretty was he sniffed stoic vast trying to show off how much he laughed in the face of death Oh, I don't know. So I said, go with the belts, leaning in to look in as well. I think I can see a bit of a family resemblance. I know what you mean, said Boggy Brown in the beer valley, um, turning his head thoughtfully. Uh, there's a look of great aunt hefty thighs. Hiccup forced himself to open his eyes. If he was ever going to be a pirate, he would have to get used to this sort of thing. He made himself peer over and into the coffin. There, in a 
state of green and yellow decay lay the corpse of Gwenbeard the ghastly. It wasn't so bad, really. The face was all slimy and drippy, but it wasn't crawling with maggots or anything disgusting. Rather peaceful, really, lying so still. But then Hiccup was sure he saw one of the paper white fingers twitch slightly. He blinked and stared hard at it. Nothing for a second. And then there it was again, a definite quivering. The, the, the cor corpse, stuttered Hiccup. It's moving. Nonsense, boy, snack over the route. How could it possibly move? He's dead, isn't he? And he gave the corpse a good fraud with one of his forefingers. The corpse of Grimbeard the Ghastly snapped absolutely upright, propelled by some appalling force from within it. Yellow eyes popping, dribbly green face, contorted in a ghastly grimace. And look, there they are, looking pretty ter terrified now. I love little tootles. Look, he's, he's cowering at the back there. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh dear. Ah! Gurgled the corpse of Grimbeard the Ghastly straight into the face of Gobber the Belch. Ah! Screeched Gobber the Belch, jumping quite three feet in the air with his hair and his beard sticking out in all directions with the shock of it. Ah! Yelled the rest of the tribe. For while hooligans do indeed laugh in the face of death and spit in the eye of the great typhoon, they have a morbid fear of the supernatural. Stoic dived underneath the table with his eye held over his head in the vague belief that if he couldn't see it, it couldn't see him. Sea water poured out of the coffin. The corpse of Grimbeard the Ghastly made disgusting choking noises. The chin on its popping yellow eyes uh, stood out. Its grey mouth quivered horribly. Only old Winkley remained calm. Gob of the Belch. That's Gob of the Belch jumping quite three feet. Yes, he's not remaining calm at all. But old Winkley is calm. Don't panic, said old Winkley. This is not the corpse of Wimbledon the Ghastly. Hiccup had frozen in tear terror, but he trusted Old Winkley and he opened his eyes. Nobody else took any notice whatsoever. They went on panicking like crazy. Woden preserve me from the terminally stupid, muttered Old Winkley under his breath, and he started yelling as this was the only language that the hooligans appeared to understand. Don't panic! This is not the corpse of Wimbledon the Ghastly! As he yelled, he patted uh, the corpse that wasn't a corpse hard on its back. Seawater sputtered out of it in all directions, gushing out of its nose and, and mouth. And it wasn't the corpse of Grimbeard the Ghastly. Now that it had recovered from its coughing um, uh, fit, it was a clearly a tall, good-looking um, good man, very much alive, if a little green from the effects of the seawater. So, said Stoic from under the table, that is definitely not the corpse of Grimbeard the Ghastly. The corpse that wasn't a corpse shook its head. Oh, no, it said faintly. Definitely not. Easy mistake to make, but no, I'm not. And it slithered out of the coffin in a rush of seawater. It removed its helmet and under the circumstances performed a remarkably graceful bow. The name is Alvin. Alvin the uh, <clears throat> poor but honest farmer. Alvin had quick, clever, laughing eyes. He had a long, elegant moustache, a little limp from the seawater. He smiled a charming, easy-going smile, although a fussy person might think that perhaps it had too many teeth in it. Alvin stepped gracefully forward to pat Hiccup on the head. And who might you be then, Sonny? Hiccup renders habit the third, stammered Hiccup. Greetings, said Alvin, the poor but honest farmer. He stopped to peer under the table. I presume from your air of natural authority, that you must be the chief of this tribe. Stoic the boss, replied Stoic. Alvin clapped a hand to his forehead. Not the Stoic the Vast, terror of the seas, most high ruler of the hooligans. Oh, hear his name in tremble, ugh, ugh. By an extraordinary coincidence, you are the very man I am looking for. Now that is a coincidence. Stoic crawled out from under the table, sank to his feet and puffed out his chest. That's me, said Stoic the Vast, uh, in much of his old hearty manner. And may I ask, if you're not the corpse of Grimbeard the Ghastly, what in Woden's name were you doing in his coffin? What a remarkably bright question, replied Halvin enthusiastically. And if I could just sit down in this comfortable looking chair, it's been a long day. Of course, of course, said Stoic, dusting off his throne. 
I would be delighted to tell you my tale, said Alvin. Now, the only person who doesn't like the look of Alvin is Toothless. Not sure about that, Alvin. But chapter six, which is tomorrow, is going to be the tale of Alvin, the poor but honest father.